the fat. Part three, staying open and flexible is the key to unlocking the brain's powers. So I'll compare my learning practice with the general, I'll say short-sighted approach many teachers take. The general logic is to be good at a technique, you have to practice, practice, practice that technique until you become better at it. From my experience, I've found that to be good at something, of course, still practice it, but also practice things unrelated to it because that gives the brain the opportunity to discover connections and inspire breakthroughs which benefit the original technique, even if on the surface it seems completely unrelated. Years ago, my dad would tell me the story of when he was raking a garden bed, uh, smoothing it out, and just in the moment he realized this is just like uh, playing chakwachi. You know, on the surface, tooting a flute and smoothing a bed out would seem completely unrelated but he was actively practicing both things and his brain found something connecting and I guess that improved something in the shakwachi plane or vice versa. Whatever it was, it was more than it could have been if he was only doing shakwachi by itself. And that's the best method you have for improving, giving your brain the opportunity to spot those connections and correlations. Now, to reap the benefits of our brain's connective powers, we have to stay in a passive, open, explorative state. What I see many people do is they'll focus on only one song or one technique, and their brain, over time, will switch into an overly critical mode. This has happened for me too. If I'm trying to nail a really complex phrase, I actually get worse the more I repeat it because it's hard to explain, but you know, I feel my brain kind of getting into this rigid, critically minded state uh, to a point where, for example, I'll start getting caught in the same string at the same place every time I repeat the, the phrase. It's like a mental mousetrap. Just as an example, in the beginning, it's easy to hit the wrong string and it's frustrating to hit the wrong string. And sometimes the more you focus on that problem, the worse it gets. From what I've heard, uh, the brain's peak performance for active learning or absorption is only in the first 15 minutes. So with that in mind, I would say, yes, work on striking accuracy for five minutes, but then move on to something else. Maybe try a left hand technique or learn part of a new song. It all depends on your comfort with shamisen, but you know, if using the bocce and the saw is too much mental focus, just put the bocce down and learn the new song using your fingers to pluck the strings whatever works for you. Uh, the real goal is to keep your practice varied. By keeping your practice varied, your brain will stay in a more relaxed, open space, which over time will allow you to discover connections and solutions that benefits uh, an earlier problem. That's the case for me, at least. Whew.